because of my jokes, um, I had gotten, well, actually it was Marshall Brickman, uh, the one who I annoyed. Um, and so I, I asked Marshall some other question and he, he said you know, with, you know, exasperation akimbo, look, I'll do it to be right, right here. here, here's the name of, of guy William Morris, here, just call him. Call him, he's, okay, okay. And I was finally coming out, just rage, <laughs> just frustration. He was a very gentle man. Um, gentleman, not gentleman, but a gentleman. So I called this agent William Morris, and uh, there had not been, there had been one other black man who had been a, a, a comedy writer that got to be one, just one of the people that had tried. But one black writer named Terry Ryan, who had written Doko, um, all these shows produced by a man named Nat Hyken, H-I-K-E-N, in the 50s and the mid-60s, but there had not been I mean, there was not a crooked number of black comedy writers. So I meet this guy, reads my jokes, he likes him, he signs me for a contract. Now, I, I can't write. I mean, I've never written a movie. I mean, people you know, in their 20s often have in you know, their drawers tortured poetry or a play or a novel or some mise en scene or something. I mean, I, I had nothing. I just had nerve and jokes. But I get a call one day from this agent. And, uh, and he said, um, listen, uh, if you don't blow this interview, you've got a job. I don't know, you know, people did Sesame Street, were criticized for having no black writers. And so this new show is teaching reading. Um, are you gonna meet the, the, exec, the exec producers? And uh, I didn't blow the interview, I got the job. But I was so, so unprepared for it because, I mean, again, I, I, I knew jokes, I could pair it. I could parrot comedic timing, um, you know, and the spirit of Joan Rivers and Brad and Dangerfield, you know, you know I, the old Borschbilt kind of, you know, but I didn't know how to write a comedy sketch. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, and there, you know, they, they like me. I learned a lot from some people, but uh, when the show went on the air, uh, this was February when I was hired. By September, um, people liked me a lot. But there were, things were so chaotic because the people who ran the show were chaotic. They just, they were terrible in running the show. But it became very clear. Uh, I mean, they brought in two writers, uh, one from the West Coast, another who had been a friend of um, one of the producers, uh, someone who actually became a friend of mine named Tom Whedon, who just died, unfortunately. Um, they were brought in to fix the show, and there was, there was no room anymore for me to, you know, for me to, to train, because it was really a training ground. So I got fired the same day as the day I got kicked out, kicked out of college finally. Ford and said, get out, you know, <laughs> we've never seen you. We put your clothes on the curb, just get out of here, just go. The same day I lose my apartment, I set up this beautiful apartment in Riverside Drive uh, from a professor at Columbia. Uh, his gay lover and he were back, so I had no place to go. Uh, so I lose my job and I lose my Italian girlfriend, Dorinda Diodato, uh, whose father, uh, from Patterson, named Johnny Dio, paid for her education all in cash. So, you know, the family got tipped off to the Mulligan, so, you know, you gotta go. All in the same week. Wow. But the good news is you came back to the show. I came not back. Not long later, right? I kept pursuing um, Sam Gibbon, was the, uh, Sam Gibbon and Dave Connell, and they allowed me to write like a sample script, and I did. And, uh, and then, uh, the writer who had been the head writer, uh, who was not a writer, you know, a wonderful actor, a wonderful, uh, he, he'd been in Second City, I mean, a marvelous comic brain named Paul Dooley, but not a writer. He, he, he didn't say that. But, um, so he left, I'm not sure if he was fired, asked to leave, whatever, but he, and so Tom Wheaton, I guess, wanted to be head writer. And I get rehired. And Tommy had been said to me that, you know, in the script that I wrote, that they didn't, you know, because I wrote a script before I got fired. And there were things I used, I had written that ended up being used in the show. And Tom said if he, if he remained that writer, or been that writer, he never would have fired me. Which I, but I learned how to write from Tom Whedon. What did he teach you? Oh, God. Um, how to construct a, a scene, how to write a sketch. The beginning, middle, and end. I mean, you know, just the whole idea of telling a story in a minute and a, and a half. The whole experience was educational. Um, so you wrote, you would write segments or you would write a whole script for an episode? Well, segments. 
you know, we had um, you know a certain amount of live material for each each uh, script. We also wrote songs, song lyrics, with our music director named Joe Raposo, who's infamous, world famous for having written the album for Frank Sinatra, "Blue Eyes Is Back." Um, in fact, the joke was that Joe's name Raposo was Portuguese, but uh, Frank thought he was Italian. If, if he ever found out, he would have Joe killed. But um, uh, so we wrote song lyrics, and, um, and again, no preparation, no background for it, but we just did it. Um, the show had a, a pretty diverse cast. With, were things diverse behind the scenes? No, of course not. I was diverse. I was. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm your diversity. No, well, that's not true. There was a black stage manager named Michael Dutton. Uh, in the studio, but in terms of staff, well, there were black researchers, uh, the people who drove us crazy, um, with their very literal understanding of things and, the, and the, no sense of humor whatsoever, none. There, were, there was one black woman named Hilda Clark, oh, I just added her, um, and another Latin lady, but no, it was not diverse.